Okay, so today we're going to continue with our second conic section, the ellipses. Uh, remember, the general form of our equation is this that's set equal to zero, and the b coefficient is zero, so that term is essentially wiped out of our equation. And just as a reminder, we recognize that we're dealing with an ellipse because the coefficients a and c are not equal, but they will have the same sign. All right, so just like with circles, the general form does not give us enough information to graph from. So we do have this other form or alternative form called standard form. And this is an equation here that you're going to want to memorize. Notice a few things are different in the standard form equation for an ellipse versus a circle. Um, the first thing we notice is that there are denominators under the x squared and the y squared terms, and we'll talk about what those represent in just a moment. And different from an equation of a circle, an equation of ellipse is set equal to 1. So remember that a circle had a constant radius all the way around, what's going to happen when we graph ellipses is that circle is going to be kind of squashed into an oval so that you'll have a longer radius in one direction and a shorter radius in the other direction. All right, so in an ellipse we have what's called a major axis, which is the long diameter. Remember, a diameter goes all the way across from end point to end point and we have a minor axis, which is the short diameter. The center, the same as circles, is going to be h and k as an ordered pair, and remember you'll always use the opposite sign of anything coming out of or going back into the parentheses in this equation. The a squared value that's underneath the x term, when we take the square root of that, that's going to be the distance from the center to the ellipse in the x direction. Since it's underneath the x variable, we're working in the x direction there. And the square root of b squared, the b value, is going to be the distance from the center to the ellipse in the y direction. Those points that we use are going to be called the vertices, which are the endpoints of the major axis or the covertices, which are the endpoints of the minor axis. So just to give you a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about, if we have an ellipse that's squashed in the vertical direction here, the A distance would be this horizontal distance from the center out to the ellipse, left and right, and the B distance here would be the shorter distance from the center to the ellipse in the vertical direction. Here and here. So the vertices are going to be these two points along this major axis, that's the longer diameter, and these two points on our ellipse are going to be the covertices because those are the endpoints of this shorter axis or the minor axis. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do with our ellipses is write an equation of an ellipse from a picture. And much like circles, there's some information that we'll need. We'll need to find the center, we'll need to find that A distance and that B distance, and then we'll simplify our equation. So first of all, we'll write down our the first thing we'll do is write down our standard form equation, x minus h quantity squared divided by a squared, plus y minus k squared divided by b squared equals 1. Remember, an equation of an ellipse is always going to be set equal to 1, and we will always have addition between our two terms. Now, from our picture, we'll find the center, which is this point right here in the middle of our ellipse. And reading the coordinates of that, it looks like we have a center of 3 comma 0. Now the a and the b distance, remember the a distance is always going to be this distance from the center to the edge of your ellipse in the horizontal direction, 
our A distance is 1, and our B distance is always going to be this vertical distance from the center to the edge of our ellipse. And in this case, our B distance is 4. All right, so now we have all of the pieces that we need, and we can substitute those into our equation. Remember, our center is the H and K, and they go in with the opposite sign, so our equation will look like this. X minus 3 quantity squared over the A distance squared, 1 squared is just 1, plus our K value for our center is 0, so remember Y minus 0 is just Y, that becomes a Y squared, and our B distance that we're going to use in our equation is 4, so when we square that in the denominator it becomes a 16, and our equation of an ellipse is always equal to 1. And there we have our standard form equation of this ellipse. This is a great form of our equation, but remember that when we divide something by 1, it really just gives us x minus 3 squared plus y squared divided by 16 is equal to 1. This is the form that you'll most likely be seeing equations of ellipses written in, and when you don't see that denominator, it's this understood value of 1. Okay, so let's move on to this next example. It's example 1 if you're using your note sheet. I've written the standard form equation for our ellipse, and remember we need to find the center of our ellipse. We can see that from our graph. Our center is at negative 2 2, and then we're not so much worried with what A and B um, really are. We want to remember that whatever is underneath the x squared term is going to be this horizontal distance, and that's 3. Okay, so there's my A. Whatever is this vertical distance from the center to our ellipse is going to go underneath the y squared term. In this case, our B value is 2. So we have all of the pieces that we need. Notice that this radius in the horizontal direction is longer than the one in the vertical direction. So this is a horizontal ellipse. And when we substitute the values into our equation, here's our h and our k. Remember they go in with the opposite sign. So that will look like x plus 2 squared divided by this horizontal distance of 3 squared, which becomes 9, plus, remember there's always addition in your equations for ellipses, and the y minus k will look like this, y minus 2 squared, divided by this vertical distance squared, that becomes a 4, and our equation is set equal to 1. There's our equation in standard form. Okay, before we move on to the next example, let me remind you of a little bit of vocabulary. We'll look at the major axis, which is the longer diameter. So from end point to end point here is our major axis. Since we've got a radius of three units in the direction to the right, we also have a distance of three to the left, so the length of that major axis is six units. The minor axis, remember, is this shorter diameter. And in this case, the shorter diameter is this vertical diameter, two units uh, up from the center, two units down from the center. The overall length of our minor axis here is four units. Okay, so for this last example of writing the equation of the ellipse, I'm going to have you guys try this one on your own. So you, at this point, should pause the video, uh, try to find your center and your horizontal and vertical distances, substitute everything into the equation, and come back and check your answer when you're ready. 
Okay, so did you read that the center of this ellipse is at 1, negative 3, that's your h, and your k value. The horizontal distance from the center to the ellipse was 4 units. So notice when it came into the equation it became a 16, we squared that value. This vertical distance was 3 units, so we square that and put that underneath the y squared term and it becomes a 9. If you got that equation, you did a great job. Make sure that your equation of an ellipse is always set equal to 1 and that there is addition between these two terms. Good job.